I've been a student of plant medicine for 25 years and I'm still learning every single day. When I started working as a healer several decades ago, plant medicine was really the purview of shamans, hippies, and grassroots alternative medicine activists. You really had to search to find quality information, which shows the power of disinformation since plant medicine has really been the only medicine for most of the existence of humankind, right? For myself, though, I was a holistic healer before I became a nurse, and if it wasn't for cannabis, I would have given up my nursing license a long time ago. I actually had let my nursing license lapse since by then I had given up on my ideals of changing the healthcare system from the inside, but I needed my nursing license to do the cannabis nursing course, so I paid my dues and I took the course. What I learned there, though, was so revolutionary, it completely took over my life. Like many people, I had some trauma in my childhood, and I was lucky in many ways because my parents are great, and beyond those traumatic moments, most of my childhood was really good. When I was traumatized, though, I pushed those memories down until they were so repressed that I forgot what happened. I didn't actually recall those memories until about 10 years into my amazing marriage with my amazing husband who makes me feel safe enough that I was able to let these memories come back up. And that happened when I started working intensively with cannabis. I'd been seeking inner peace, you know, since the time I was a teenager, but having repressed the memories of my abuse, I was always looking to heal a wound that I couldn't identify. It was kind of like having a great bloody gash on your back, but you have no mirrors and you have no way of seeing what's there because you don't remember what's happened. And at the same time, though, you know something's there and there's something that you want to heal. Well, cannabis helped me calm what I now know is hypervigilance. And it's helped me work through my trauma as well. Psilocybin did help also, but that was a lot less pleasant for me. What I love about cannabis is that it helps us connect with pleasure, joy, and laughter. One of my favorite things to teach on the endocannabinoid system in my County Nurse Certificate Program is that I believe the ECS is a spiritual pleasure-seeking system. There's a study where choir members had their blood levels of endogenous cannabinoids measured. That means the chemicals that our body just makes naturally that are similar to THC and CBD. And what the study showed was that singing, an activity that these people chose because it's something they enjoyed, raised their blood levels of these endogenous, these innate cannabinoids, our inner bliss molecules. We find a similar thing with exercise. People who enjoy exercising get a rush of these endogenous cannabinoids. But you know who doesn't get a rush from it? People who are forced to exercise. It doesn't have the same effect on this most subtle of systems if you don't enjoy it. I've said it time and time again that I believe the endocannabinoid system is where spirit and matter intersect. And the more that we study it, the more I think we'll find science catching up to the mystics. This is a physiological system that is affected by how much pleasure we have in our lives. Researchers have known for decades that stress management and stress reduction alone helps people heal. So if plant medicine did nothing else but helped people reduce stress, I say it would be worth it. When you combine that with the fact that in all of recorded history, we have no deaths from people overdosing on the cannabis plant, the debate really should be over. And it is over amongst people who are educated, but that's still a small number. So it's why I've dedicated my life and my mission to making sure that nurses are educated. Because once nurses get their mindset on something, change will happen.